Mike's Daily Podcast. Welcome to FF episode 2676. So great to bring you the podcast called Mike's Daily Podcast. It's Mike Matthews and yes, it's been 2676 FFF episodes. And that means each time I do a show, I try to bring you something unique, something interesting, something that you'll go, ooh, that's very interesting, Mike. Did you know you do that every day? I do. That's why it's called, I think it's called Mike's, Mike's Daily Podcast. Podcast. And occasionally I get interrupted. But the podcast today, we're going to cover Mike's some things daily that you may go podcast. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's interesting. I hadn't looked at it that way. Okay. And we'll also get to the segment. Uh, the Mike Matthews New Tunes feud will play you some new songs and you tell me a little bit. We're going to play a little bit of the new songs because if we play too much of the new songs, YouTube will smack us in the face and take us down. That's not good. So we'll take a little bit of the songs and then you tell me which one you like best and you can call me at 510-228-4640. It is Mike Matthews and the first thing I found fascinating today was, well, I was listening to a conservative right-wing talk show host who was like many people in that world quoting Elon Musk with what he was saying about how the government needs to do more in regulating AI. And I always find it fascinating when a party that's generally not about regulation wants to regulate. And there, it's also interesting the comments... Baloney. That oh, well AI, and this is from the people in the in the tech world. They're like, well AI, you know, it's basically how it's used. In and of itself, it's okay. It's safe. It's it's how it's used that can be dangerous. Similar to what you hear people on the right say about guns. It's how they're used. And here's today's podcast picture. Shoot a coffee can off the top of a farm post, no problem. Shoot your best bud, no. Not a good idea. Podcast picture today is of of the, uh, what do you call it? Sunset in Pleasanton, California. See it at mikesdailypodcast.com. It was about a week ago and it was a fiery sunset. Fiery. I'm all fiery today. Because I'm looking at what people argue and then, you know, myself included. You go back and go, wait, but Mike, didn't you say the same exact thing about something else, but you were like for that instead of being against it? Oh, oh, that's true. The late, great Basil the Boxer. He'd find himself in these conundrums from time to time. And he would say the roo-roo in response. But so it came down to this talk show host was saying, yeah, somebody called me and said, hey, I thought you were calling me. But it was actually an AI-generated voice. News random. And I get into this argument all the time with my crazy conspiratorial friends that say that AI can basically create babies, create cars that drive on their own that then are going to drive into your house and do a Christine and try and kill you. And, okay, maybe that could happen. But still, like, all this stuff. Like, uh, what was the eagle eye? Do you remember that? When he was all Shia LaBeouf, he was so big in 2009. He had done that Indiana Jones movie, I think, in 2009, 2008. He was really big, popular guy, and then things happened in his life. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I remember some kind of crazy stuff where he was shouting loudly. (laughs) And he may have starred in some movies he probably shouldn't have starred in. I don't know. But he was all the rage And Steven Spielberg did this movie I guess he liked Shia LaBeouf Because he also did the Indiana Jones movie The fourth one MTV News You hear it First Steven Spielberg got out of the hole Doing the fifth one Which has probably made him very happy But Shia LaBeouf was then And apparently From what I heard I, I watched the Honest Trailers I don't go see movies anymore I just watch the Honest trailers Pretty interesting And I know that offends Some of my younger friends My younger peeps That are like Hey Mike You gotta get out there And see a movie They're great You know It's great going out there And getting the movie experience Well I say to them Look I did that when I was your age That's fine But 
I don't need to do it anymore. I don't want to get COVID again. I don't want to pay the crazy high prices. No, thank you. Mike ripped someone a new one. But they're like, oh, Mike, you're going to miss out. Don't just watch Honest Trailers. Nah, that seems to be enough. I'm, I would have loved to have gone and supported Indiana Jones from a purely nostalgic point of view. But you know what? Harrison Ford's got enough money. The Disney's got enough money. I don't need to do that. So... Apparently, and, and now Disney's thrown time travel and multiverses even into the whole Indiana Jones world. So I'm done with that. But back, backing up somewhere to Eagle Eye and like the AI is taking over machines of all type and drones and it's killing people and it, it, it's sentient and it knows, it knows how to destroy. It's sort of like a t- Terminator thing. Was it Sky Network or Sky Lab or whatever it was that took over? What in, what in the world was that about? And there's all this fear. So what I'm saying to you is this. I don't like talk show hosts that all they do is make you live in fear. And that's basically what this guy did was he just ranted for an hour about how he was afraid of AI and he was spurred on by Elon Musk's comments. And he's just afraid, you know, AI should basically be taken down completely. And it's just like the way the the left side of politics wants to get rid of guns. So it's just, it, it's not going to bring us any good. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen. AI is not going away anytime soon. The genie's been let out of the bottle. We just have to be smarter as a society. Yes, you have to get smarter. Sorry. You thought it was going to be cool just being dumb all the time? Nope. Got to learn stuff. In fact, you should learn something every day. Otherwise, that brain is just going to turn to mush. And dementia and everything else will be at your door. So learn something new. And one of the things is it is very easy to tell when you're getting an AI voice played to you. You can detect it if you're very perceptive. Same with AI video and the fake... The, the, the video fakes that they talk about I forget the particular term But the fake outs The fake-ish things You can see through the fake Is what I'm saying And we gotta be smarter As a society Though <laughs> Oh yeah <laughs> We yeah. tend to use more and more faking To Make ourselves feel better I'm talking about when we do a photograph Of ourselves We go in We press the filter That makes us look younger as we go outside a cafe anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley, Tim, the last place on earth. Or people that make videos for YouTube, they chop out all the parts where they're stuttering and making stupid comments and they, embarrassing comments. Or maybe the, the light. Oh, let's just talk about that light everybody bought during COVID, that fluorescent circle. Everybody got that. Put that on their desk Whenever they did A Zoom call Because it made them Look beautiful It made their eyes pop Please Where is the realness Going on I know All these sounds Behind me are not real At one point They were real I mean I'm sure These birds were not Synthetically made They're real birds Recorded outside (laughs) Okay But that's part of My podcast vibe Y'all This is my little World of ambiance I hope you enjoy One of the things Though you should be And it it all comes down to this This is what the experts say This is what the smart people say And in the end Even this dumb Right wing talk show host Alluded to this And that is You need to have good Data hygiene Ha 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 Sounds like dental hygiene But it's data hygiene You got to Do the double verification Don't have something verify with you to an email Verify it to your phone Less likely to get hacked Less likely Less likely I know it's not foolproof But it's less likely Do the double, triple, quadruple The more verifications you do You make it exceedingly more difficult for the hackers For your entertainment The one The only Mike Matthews <laughs> But there are benefits that we get With this better technology 
I can't think of anything at the moment, but maybe you, you can get the information faster. Once upon a time, as we were talking about, I think on the podcast on Wednesday, Thursday, it was we were discussing the whole thing about how Google got started and about how at the time there was Alta Vista and Yahoo. And Yahoo was like a big phone book and very difficult for people to find what they wanted. Alta Vista had its own difficulties in finding what you needed. And Google came along and said, okay, we're going to rank. We're going to find things. We're going to actually look at the web pages and search, not just look at the name of the website, but actually look at the content that's on each web page and see what it, if it's relevant to what the people want. Now, I'm not promoting Google in any way. You know it already. They don't need any promotion. I don't like the whole thing where they push what they want you to see at the top. If you look up Mike's Daily Podcast on Google, you will get, I think, something like the YouTube channel. And you might even get somebody else other than me, Mike Matthews. You might get somebody else who doesn't have a show called Mike's Daily Podcast, but they do a daily type show and their name is Mike. And they might be popular in sports or something. But yeah, it's it's a game. Everybody's trying to game the system. And Google Mike Scavenger Hunt. They're getting they're going through their court issues now with the uh, government, the US government. But Google Voice has done something. I think this is a good feature at least. You know how we get all those ridiculous texts that are there to spam us? They want us to click on the you know, you get that text. And maybe you're trying to even delete the text, but you actually accidentally hit the link that's on the text and oops, uh uh-oh, you've opened something bad in your phone. Well, Google Voice has introduced a new feature that is similar to the suspected spam caller warnings, but this time it's for SMS messages. So a lot of people use SMS as they're texting. You maybe do that yourself and you don't even know. On both Android and iOS devices. So both the Apple and the Android-based phones, your Samsung phones. Users will now be alerted of suspected spam messages with a red exclamation sign appearing in the profile avatar spot. Now, I think I'm already getting this, but the message preview will also include the phrase suspected spam in matching color for easy identification. Okay, so we already have this in the US. I thought this sounded familiar. But apparently this is now in India as well. So it's moving across the world. If you're using Google Voice, you're familiar with our suspected spam caller warnings. We're extending this feature to SMS messages on Android and iOS devices. They said in a blog post. And just this is good. Whatever we can use to help fight those horrible spammers that are trying to catch us at every turn. Now, I'm going to pivot. I'm going to dance ever so quickly to a different topic. Really quickly, I was thinking about... Concerts. We were talking about in the last podcast, the podcast that was entitled Analog, that featured a picture of the wonderful Patches the Cat. That was FF episode 2675. We were discussing Taylor Swift and how big her concert tour was and how she's going outside the Hollywood system to release her concert movie and how I, I would be happy to go see the movie rather than actually go to a live concert. But the movie's going to be really expensive to see. But in the end, I don't like going to concerts, and here's why. And this is a terrible thing that's been going on since the 80s. And I first started going to concerts in the 80s. I was a teenager. 1986, I saw Boston. And there was a really cool band called Fahrenheit. They were a trio I think the guy, the lead singer's name was Chris Farron, and there was somebody in the band called, last name was Height, so they called it Fahrenheit. And they were a great band, but they did not get very far. 
Boston, of course, is huge. Still big. You still hear more than a feeling everywhere you go. The Micropedia in Zanica. And there was a thing where, you know, like even you watch Queen singing Radio Gaga, the very famous footage from Live Aid. And he does the thing where all we need is Radio Gaga, Radio Goo Goo. And he's having the audience clap with him. And maybe he th- points the microphone at the audience and the audience sings a little bit. Well, sometime in the 90s, I started noticing concerts. Went to a lot of concerts in the 90s, a lot of country concerts. But I started noting, like, Tim McGraw. He was very famous in his early days. His second big single was a song called Don't Take the Girl. And I went to several of his concerts And every time he did that song He didn't sing the chorus He'd sing the verses And then he'd just let the audience sing The chorus And this has been going on And has gotten bigger and bigger To the point that a lot of performers Don't sing their choruses anymore They'll do the little thing The little dance They'll sing the verses But when it gets to the chorus The audience sings And to me that's like a total cop out I paid good money, more money than I've ever paid to go see a concert, to see your concert, and you don't even sing? And this is only going to get worse, everybody, (laughs) to the point they're going to come out. And, you know, I don't know if it's going to go to Millie Vanilli style, where they didn't even sing it. They just kind of lip sung, lips were lip synced to a track. But that is another reason why I'm not a fan of concerts. Sing the song I want to see you do the chorus I want to This is what got me interested in your music Nowadays it And people pay good money Young people They want the experience Quote unquote You hear that expression all the time Young generations The Gen Z Some of the millennials Because hey you millennials You're getting old now Some of you millennials you, The younger end of you millennials Going to concerts The older end of course You've got babies and stuff Good for you Starting businesses Getting rich Hopefully Or Paying off a divorce And not getting rich Or Whatever you're doing Good luck to you But People are paying for these experiences Which is just another word for Vapid events Nobody Is get It's like a tribute It's like you're going there To pay homage To some god That you've created in your mind It's a human Natural human feature We have to have We have to go And and pay homage And worship something And for some It's a rock star And they feel like Oh my gosh I'm there It's like I can touch him But I'm like seven miles away from the stage Oh boy But I'm going to sing Along to the song But I'm not hearing the song Because everybody is singing around me And drowning out Taylor Swift who's singing And I don't understand Am I all wrong? Is that not what the concert experience is? I got a friend A younger friend She goes to all these shows all these concerts She even worked for live uh, Live I almost said live aid Live nation One of those live things The band live Now that'd be cool Ed Kowalczyk Very nice guy I met him once And we were sitting in a radio studio He had just been interviewed by my friend Who was a DJ there And all of a sudden Bring Me a Higher Love by Stevie Wonder came on Stevie Wonder Steve Winwood came up on And Ed goes Oh I love this song You know this song was mixed by the same guy Who mixed our latest album Which was the one That had Heaven On it No not the Brian Adams song But the song Heaven by the group Live I don't need no one To tell me about heaven I can see the Something in my daughter's eyes. Oh my gosh! The bottom of the chart. Pretty good songs that never made it on the radio because people didn't think they were worth. But you know what? They come back up and people start playing them, and it's like, oh, where'd that come from? All you're doing is, 
you're not doing you're not helping anything so you may have helped the economy by spending some of that excess money you have on a hotel and hey I've got this disposable income I might as well blow it on a hotel fly to some city that's kind of cool go see the concert hey it'll be a hoot I'm just saying support the people that need the support that are just starting out that are driving in their van from town to town why isn't there any of that going on today? It seems so little of that is happening. And it was even worse for these poor bands, these struggling bands during COVID. At least now, and we were discussing that on the last podcast that was called Analog, about how we used to not be able to go see concerts and we had to go to quote unquote virtual events. And how annoying were those? Because yeah, I'm not there. I'm on a glorified Zoom call that I paid 30 bucks. But I'm helping support a band. Now you can actually go to the place. Mike's absolutely useless review. So a lot of these people with disposable income, they have made some wise choices and they have found something, a career that pays them well. Maybe they have just gotten a promotion. And maybe some of these people who got a promotion decided, hey, I'm going to quit. Within a month after their first promotion, yes, quit. Within a month after their first promotion, 29% of employees left the workplace. Quitting after a promotion, it's more common than you think. This from the messenger.com and MSN. Getting promoted could actually increase an employee's chance of quitting. And I saw this firsthand. We had a guy working for us. I worked with him for about two years. It started in COVID. He left about two years later. He complained every single day that he wasn't making more money. He did everything. And then he complained. He wanted, if I can't just get a raise, I'll do more. I want to do this job, but I want to make a whole bunch more money. And he kept trying to make that happen, trying to push that through the process and it just wasn't happening finally one day he did get a promotion within a month he was gone he quit it happens a lot within a month after their first promotion 29% of employees left their workplace the payroll processing firm ADP their research institute found in their latest study which includes 1.25 million employees and 381 employers. That is a huge sample size. The Institute estimated that promotion increased the chances that a person would leave their employer by two thirds. Yes. Oh, you want a promotion? Okay, you're gonna leave. (laughs) There's a two thirds chance you're gonna leave. Wow. Matthew's News. The promotion increased the chances a person would leave their employer by two thirds. The ADP said there are two explanations as to why this could be the case. Let's find out what they are, shall we? A promotion makes people more attractive candidates in the job market. So that employee then will parlay that to get another job it can also pile on responsibilities without sufficient preparation compensation or resources actually this guy who got the promotion that I know of no added responsibilities in fact he probably did less but he still walked away for another job that was going to pay him way more but I'm sure he had a lot more responsibilities involved with it as well with the new job You think there'd be this euphoria and commitment after a promotion, said the chief economist at ADP. But actually, people are thinking, what is the next step? Disparities in job requirements can change the impact of a promotion on someone's chances of quitting. Notably, people who receive their first promotion in jobs that require little or no education were six times more likely to leave within a month than if they had not been promoted. Wow. 
So if they'd not been promoted They would have stuck around And then when they were promoted Six times more likely to leave On the other hand Those in jobs requiring Advanced degrees Or technical skills Are only 52% more likely to leave That's still pretty high Wow Managers are also more of a flight risk When it comes to a promotion Particularly first and third level managers But promotions are still rare According to the ADP Only 4.5% of workers are promoted Within two years of being hired Wow Only 4.5% That means few people are susceptible To promotions impact On the risk of leaving Leading to a small overall effect On the company as a whole And people may be more hesitant to leave their job now as the labor market is beginning to cool. A recent Labor Department report found that the number of job openings dropped in July this year. And private employers in the U.S. also added fewer jobs than expected in August. That also according to a separate report by the ADP. Fascinating stuff. And I wanted to bring another interesting story to you fairly recent here. California is suing oil companies for climate deception. Experts say it's becoming increasingly likely that the oil industries will be required to pay damages for knowingly contributing to the climate crisis and deceiving the public about the impact of their pollution after California announced new litigation against ExxonMobil, Shell, BP, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, and the American Petroleum Institute. This happened on Friday evening. California joins more than 40 states and municipalities pursuing climate liability lawsuits that seek to hold major polluters accountable for lying to the public about their role in causing climate change. California's suit is significant not only because California is the largest economy now suing big oil, Why not, right? There's big tech, a big pharma. It is also the first oil producing state to pursue such charges. We produce a lot of oil here. The Attorney General's uh, lawsuit calls for the establishment of an abatement fund to help pay for future climate disasters and community resilience measures. There's eight California municipalities And that includes San Francisco, Oakland, Santa Cruz, Richmond, Imperial Beach And the counties of San Mateo, San Marin, and Santa Cruz So a lot of places up here in the Bay Area Filed some of the nation's first ever climate lawsuits against fossil fuel companies Back in 2017 and 18 Several of those cases are now proceeding toward trial in state courts This from the sunstonestrategies.org Sent me an email about that. First of all, I just want to just um, thank everyone for joining us here on this show. This is great. The News Bleed Section. And finally, this little bit that came from Rob Black. I produce his podcast, The Rob Black Show. He covers all kinds of business stuff. I'm sure he'll talk about that on his next show. He's also on the radio in the Bay Area, AM 1220 KDOW, and on TV on Cron TV. But YouTube is trying to take down TikTok. I'm not a fan of TikTok. I know that's just completely a man screaming in the wilderness. Nobody cares. So many people are on TikTok. I've talked to people my own age that are starting to get on TikTok. So, you know, (laughs) you know, it's going the way of Facebook. I mean, people thought, oh, Facebook will go the way of MySpace once all the old people like me get on Facebook. Well, nope. Facebook stuck around So it'll be interesting to see If now with all the people Getting on TikTok If it'll stick around like Facebook Or if it'll go away like MySpace I doubt it The young people love TikTok I'm not ever going to get on TikTok What I do is not like a short uh, Dopamine hit Video thing That I do It's all audio It's kind of like the old days of radio Where somebody was real and talked to you Through a microphone about stuff And issues and things you were thinking about maybe 
But YouTube is basically, according to Rob, failing in its attempt to take down TikTok. TV killed books, he says. <laughs> yes, no, books are not dead. Books are still around. People still love their books. YouTube killed TV. To some extent, that's true. I watch very little TV as compared to watching YouTube. TikTok is killing YouTube. A staggering one billion hours of YouTube videos are watched every day. So they're still doing really well. Rob was even saying that he wanted to purchase or would, you know, say that if he could have back in the day purchased YouTube stock, he'd be he'd be a gazillionaire today. Well, two years ago, Google owned YouTube launched shorts trying to compete with TikTok with short form videos. It's a short form video platform. Very easily integrated into the YouTube app, the YouTube webpage or wherever, you know, you just, it's difficult to watch shorts. Eat my shorts. That was my little uh, grumpy old man. Thing. Walter Matthau wow, shots, wow. But it is difficult to watch shorts On a flat screen TV Because it only takes up the center of the, of the screen So that's kind of annoying It's more based for your phone And I like to watch YouTube videos Done in the HD Looking really nice Taking up my whole screen Making it feel like I'm looking through a window To some other place And shorts don't do that it's a short form video platform But hey What a perfect name You get what it's called as described TikTok overtube, overtook YouTube In daily viewership hours for kids Between the age of 4 And 18 They did that all the way back Three years ago In 2020 in June of that year and the gulf has been widening. Kids watched 107 minutes of TikTok a day last year. Compared to just 67 minutes of YouTube. And that's kids, everybody. Kids. So what does that mean? What happens when they turn into adults and they got less time? Maybe they'll have even less time when they're adults doing all the adult things that they need to do and responsibilities. Oh, I need to be entertained. I'll just watch this little TikTok video. And they're being trained on it. So that could be what happens. TikTok will only get stronger. Well, YouTube Shorts now has 2 billion users every month. So that's not... Uh, so, wait, What? Interesting. Okay, YouTube's shorts now have 2 billion users every month versus how many users TikTok has? 1 billion. So YouTube is doing much better than TikTok in this, it would look like. They have twice the amount of users with their shorts. I keep thinking of that eat my shorts Walter Matthau thing. But like Facebook, like them being the Borg and absorbing and assimilating things and, and taking things in. So YouTube, uh, Facebook saw uh, Snapchat, went after Snap and made Instagram mimic Snap. And with Instagram having their own little stories thing, that mimics TikTok as well. So they're trying to copy them. And then you got Alphabet with YouTube copying TikTok and actually doing well. Getting twice as many users every month than TikTok. The problem is that Shorts, YouTube's thing, is steering audiences away from long form content, which may have more robust ads. It may have more ads as Shorts are short and can't hold much advertising. And that's the thing is, I hear of TikTok influencers. But how can they be influencers when they don't have any time? Just as this said, that there's less time for advertising when YouTube had the long form, has the long form stuff. And I know because I'll be watching something that's 20 minutes long. I get interrupted with ads and it's always just randomly and very randomly and very abrupt. But 
when you're watching on the flat screen through something like the thing that Xfinity provides, Flex, the commercial breaks are only about two minutes. And you can actually jump through them. So it ends up being maybe 30 seconds. It can be quite quick and you're back to the video. And so they've got the time with that to show you ads, but with the shorts, they don't. And same thing with TikTok, but somehow there are TikTok influencers. So people are watching these short videos and watching a lot of them. And the people are somehow, the influencers are being like a fox and really clever cramming their content in there to promote something and then getting money for that. What's the cliche of the week? 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 Can streaming and TV coexist? Disney's TV networks have disappeared from Charter Spectrum TV service. That would be the equivalent to Xfinity in other parts of the country. I think in Florida, for example. What's the cliche of the week? 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 And apparently Disney's TV networks have disappeared from that company's service due to a contract dispute depriving more than 14 million people of FX and ESPN And that meant no U.S. Open or college football recently for Charter's 15 million cable subscribers earlier this month. Traditional pay TV providers have lost about 25 million customers over the last five years. And they blame that on the rising cost of networks like ESPN and competition from streaming. Charter wants to include Disney's streaming services for free in its cable packages. And that would include Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, and Hulu. But Disney has refused. The future of TV hangs in the balance. Charter is threatening to abandon the traditional linear TV model. Disney has talked about taking ESPN direct to consumer. It also has used the channel blackout as an opportunity to push Hulu Plus live TV. And that is what... An, it, and I'm even starting to get attracted to YouTube, uh, to Hulu, rather. I used to never, I mean, I watched Hulu in the early days when it was free and you had to sit through a lot of commercials, but you could see TV shows that aired the previous night without actually having a TV package. I had, I didn't have a cable package. I just had internet and was able to watch it. And then it, Hulu started to cost money. And even with a plan, a Hulu plan, you still had to sit through ads. So I said, forget that. I don't need Hulu. But then Disney got involved with Hulu and started to bring some more interesting content into it. What? Oh, somebody is wishing to bring some interesting content to the show right now. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? It's a disgruntled field player. Tell you what. What? I don't know what you who or Hulu or YouTube or Ick Block or TikTok or Sunblock is, but all I know is I love to sit with my lovely, lovely Benita and her horse who kind of stinks. That's my life and I enjoy it. And I don't play the fiddle because the fiddle annoys me and that's why I'm disgruntled, Mike. Uh-huh. Wow. That was a very fascinating sentence. Look who else is here. Hello, Mike. I make the delicious root beer. How's the right now? You know, I've been sipping on another root beer you gave me, but thanks for filling up my mug. Because, uh, uh, it's still tough for me. I'm still getting over something in my lungs. I think I am reacting to something in the air. It's not COVID because I don't have a temperature, no headaches, none of the achiness or the, you know, stomach stuff or any of that. But it is something in my lungs. I think I'm reacting to the, uh, the there's just a lot of stuff in the air. And I have a zillion apples that fell off the trees in my backyard. 
I don't know if they're slowly poisoning me. But at any rate, you need that pectin. Isn't that right, Brewmaster? Yeah, drink right now. Cut you over. Don't do that. Let me, okay. Hey, you know what? Mm. That's so good. Thank you. It's time now for the segment, the Mike Matthews New Tunes Feud. We're going to play for you a couple of songs that were sent to me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. I'm going to play them for you because I love to do that and to share with you stuff. Oh, hey, I just got this. I wanted to pass along to you real quickly. If you're listening to this on the 18th, possibly you are. It is National Cheeseburger Day. All Jimmy Buffett, the late, great Jimmy Buffett, Cheeseburger in Paradise. What a great song. It's not It's not the best song ever, but hey, it puts a smile on your face anyway. And maybe you are even listening to this on the 19th. If you are, it is National Butterscotch Pudding Day. Uh, that's one of those puddings you don't hear too much about. In fact, I remember I got sick from eating butterscotch pudding or... I think it made me sick as a kid. So let's not talk about that. It's also National Talk Like a Pirate Day. So that just means basically putting a lot of R's into whatever you're saying. Hey, Mike, what college did you wish you went to? Oh, I wish I had gone to Harvard instead of uh, the wonderful UC Santa Bar Barbara. And, you know, it's also National Voter Registration Day on the 19th, which is interesting because I just thought about that. You know, usually this time of year, I am swamped with every possible piece of uh, hard paper, piece of paper, hard stock, whatever you call it, that comes in the mail with all these nice photographs, sensationalized photographs telling me to vote for this don't vote for that, don't vote for this proposition, vote for yes for this proposition. And the airwaves, the local radio waves are filled with every possible chit chat about every issue that you could care less about. And then of course the politicians, the politicians, the politicians. And you hear from this party and that party and back and forth and back and forth and everybody's talking and it's just, we don't have that this year. Yay! I wish that would be the case every year. Unfortunately, it's not. But yes, just thought I'd remember to remind you to be happy about that at least. (laughs) That's one good thing. One piece of silver lining that you should remember and, you know, just, uh, just acknowledge it. All right, what? Let's do this. The first song is from a band called Isk We. And they sent to Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com the following. Hey, Mike, I met my love, my future wife, on a fall afternoon in front of a park halfway between our two homes. I was late. I am always late. They are never late. As I walked towards them, I started to skip like I was five years old with the biggest smile on my face. My stomach knew I would love them like nobody before and now in hindsight, like nobody after. For me, marriage is a commitment to try harder than you would with anyone else because that person is so special and that's what we did. Okay, the name of the song is called End of It All by Isqui. Wow, that's I was expecting like a love song of some kind. Oh, it says uh, this uh, refers to the legal portion of our marriage <laughs> as the friendship that developed between my ex-wife and I during our final months of marriage became an unbreakable bond. What? All right. So that was the first song. Did you like song number one? Or how about this one? Now, this guy's been on the podcast, Mike's Daily Podcast years ago, Daniel G. Harmon. You can hear the interview we did. We did a couple of interviews at mikesdailypodcast.com. Click on that home button at the top and the interviews will pop up. Go to the interviews. Uh, is it A through F? Because it's under D for Daniel. Daniel G. Harmon. He says, hello. 
After I don't know how many full-length albums and countless singles, I am so very excited to tell you that I'm releasing my first album on vinyl. It's only taken 20 years to get there. For those who don't know, I had an injury last year that left me in bed for the month of June. It sucked, but it kind of kicked me into a new musical direction in that I couldn't sing or play the guitar. What came out... Oh, man, it sucks. Sorry, Daniel. What came out was... Unspoken Ghost Volume 1. I enjoyed the process of making those songs so much that I decided to do it again and invite some friends. And now he's got a Volume 2, which came out this June. So here is a little bit of the song Unspoken Ghost Special Edition. Wow, yeah, instrumental, definitely very, very good to exercise that amazing talent that he has. So that's Daniel G. Harmon. Song number three is Selena Wolf. Hi, Mike. Tough kid signifies the death of my fears, the fear of what other people think, the fear of going all in, the fear of embodying my full self out loud. Co-producing and writing with Hoxie Workman gave me the space to step into my power. We wanted the song to be all at once massive, swaggering, and grinding, a sonic representation of that invitation to be your most confident self. And I also wanted to keep the live show in mind to have that electric energy interwoven. And it is... Oh, it came from Selena Wolf. But this is actually Sky Wallace who sent this to me. Oh, I'm very confused. So the name of this artist is Sky Wallace, and this song is called Tough Kid. Interesting. Interesting kind of, uh, what do you think of that? Song number three. Kind of this electro background thing happening. The pop punk band of party-loving delinquents called Faku, Faku, Paku, Paku, Paku. I think that's how you call it. Paku, Paku, Paku. They dropped the night John Buck hit three home runs. Uh, Aptly titled... It's called Sick Days, and that's with three eyes. <laughs> it's an LP. Aptly titled, this was the name, The Same Night. The, oh, wait, no. Aptly titled, this was the same night that vocalist, bassist Mike Warren's grandfather passed away. However, Warren assures... Mike Warren. This isn't a sad song. Don't be fooled. It's about watching baseball with my best pals for as long as life will allow. Here's Paku, 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 and the song the night John Buck hit three home runs. Parties, you talk to everybody in the room. And I know that the age gap makes this statement seem far-fetched. But honestly... Ties aside, you were always my best friend, and so we watched a little baseball. Oh, I have to stop it there. I'm gonna get dinged by YouTube if I keep going. All right, that's very nice. The horns come in, and the you <laughs> the YouTube video, which you can find if you look up P K E W. That's how they spell Paku, 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 Paku. Look up the video because everybody's in the water. Uh, like in some lake up to their necks and even the guy with the horn is as well and by the way if you have not gone to my youtube video channel it is youtube.com slash mike's daily podcast or you can look me up if you hit at mike matthews and you'll find my channel i have on my channel a playlist called the best obscure rock songs found by mike matthews playlist And it is up to well past 100 songs. You've got to check it out. I've found all kinds of cool songs from the 80s up until now. Maybe some 70s thrown in there. I don't know. Live stuff. Just 
a, amazing new bands, old bands. It's great. So I put a lot of work into that, and it's a joy for me to listen to. I go to that playlist at least once a month to listen to some stuff. The final song for you here in the Mike Matthews New Tunes feud is by the Crowleys. Hey Mike, the collection of songs on our debut album, Strange Seasons, were written over a long period of time. A lot of the music was born out of us getting together and playing with no real goal in mind. Just friends making what they found together. No single theme or inspiration drove the songwriting, but a lot of messed up things were and still are happening in the world and around us, so we often wrote about that or the things we did to escape it. Here is their song called Seasons. The Crowleys is that band. Awesome. Well, which song did you like best? You can give me a call at 510-228-4640. Or you can also email me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. Song number one was Isky, Isqui with End of It All. Song number two, Unspoken Ghost by Daniel G. Harmon. Song three, Sky Wallace with Tough Kid. Song four, Paku, 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 The Night John Buck Hit Three Home Runs. And song five, The Crowleys and Seasons. Let me know which one you like best. I will announce the winner on the next show or whenever I get calls. <laughs> will you shut up? Liberty Nation Freedom Foam for All. Or responses to, or comments. You can also comment below any social media that you are hearing this podcast from and let me know which song you like best. That's how this works. The Mike Matthews New Tunes Feud. Next show, we'll bring you the wonderful Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, Bison Bentley, and with more ways to reach me, it's A-Frame. Mike's TV Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.